The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. Open your hearts, you have to hear this story. Ah, the Torah HaKdosha, Kimu v'kibelu ha-Yehudim. What does it mean to us? And what does it mean to Bore Olam? When a simple Jew simply sits down for five minutes and opens up a Gemara. Open your hearts, my friends. I want you to hear this. Heard from Harav Levenstein. I'd like to give it over properly. Hashem should give me the words. There was a couple. Newly married right here in Brooklyn. And after some time, after being married for a few years, they were not zochet to children. And I tell you, from someone who went through this on a very small level, there are no words to describe the pain. There's no words to describe. Nonetheless, this couple, they were going to doctors. They were trying every sigula in the world, running from mikubal to mikubal, but yet to no avail. After five years of being married, not knowing what to do, they went out to Belgium, the infertility capital of Europe, and it was there that they tried all different types of programs and all different types of medicines. But yet, the years, the years went on. And after 10 years of marriage and no children, they finally realized that they might have to accept a certain fate. But they did not want to give up on their faith. Husband turns to wife. Wife turns to husband. And they both talked and they agreed. There's one sigula that we did not yet do. Maybe this is our last string. Maybe this is it. The sigula of Abraham Avinu, the husband said to his wife, you know, maybe we should make aliyah to Eretz Yisrael, Eretz Hagdosha. Maybe there. We'll be zochet the children. Lech lecha. El ha'aretz asher ar'eka. But over there, there's chale goi gadol. It's there that I'm going to give you children. Maybe we should move to Eretz Yisrael. His wife, his wife agreed. But after looking into it more realistic and seriously, there were certain family issues. There were certain problems and difficulties, certain obligations that they had that they just could not get up and leave. They just could not make aliyah to Eretz Yisrael. So the years went on. And after quite a few years, it was one day, that close to 20 years of marriage, fruitless. Husband comes home and says to his wife, that's it, we're going. I just can't do this anymore. We need to try. We tried everything else. Let's, let's just try this. His wife agrees. They put everything aside. He sold his business. He sold his home. He sold his cars. And they were on a flight. Aliyah to Eretz Israel. And then, they moved to Israel. The first year that the husband was there in Israel, he went to the hotel one night to pray. And he bumps into an old friend from Brooklyn who seemed to be on vacation visiting Israel for a few days. And he bumps into him and says, Hey, how are you? What's going on? We, you know, we were very close friends. Haven't seen you in years. Friend looks at him and says, Yeah, well, where you disappeared to? I haven't seen you in the longest time. He says, well, I'll tell you the truth. I, My wife and I, we made Aliyah to Israel. We're living here in Eretz Israel. We're waiting. We're waiting for Yeshua Hashem. We're waiting. His friend looks at him. And with a little American grin, he says to him, Really? But uh, please don't take this the wrong way. You're married for now almost 21 years. I mean... If you didn't have kids till now, why would you want to raise yourself up for another fall? Listen, I'm a friend of yours. I'm talking to you as a friend. I love you. I just don't want you to get hurt. Put it out of your head. It's 20, almost 21 years of marriage. You're not having kids. Make peace with the situation. Well, the man heard these words. And he understood that they were not meant but to help him. It was from a true friend. 
And he accepted. He said, okay, well, we got to try. And it's with that that they departed, went back in their own ways. And this American guy went back to America. And when he comes home to his wife, he says, hey, you know, on my vacation to Israel, you never believe who I met. Remember so-and-so, an old friend of mine? One time we were best friends. We grew up together. She says, yeah, yeah, I remember him. Well, I met him in Israel. And he actually moved to Israel. And get a load of this. He moved to Israel for the Segula to have kids. He's married for 21 years. You know, I told him. What was he thinking? 21 years of marriage. Make peace with the situation. It is what it is. Like we say here in Brooklyn. Just accept it. His wife looked at him. You said, what? That's what you told him? Why did you why did you butt into his business on something that was so sensitive, so private? How could you say that? He says, no, 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 no. Listen, I, I, I told him. I, I loved him. We're we're real friends. I, I just I felt as a true friend I had to tell it him the way it is. I don't want to see him getting hurt. Make peace with it. It is what it is. So his wife gets upset. How could you say that? Are you Bore Olam? Hashem wants to give him a kid. Hashem can give him a son this year. So the husband says, <laughs> Okay, listen. If Hashem gives him a son this year, then guess what? I'm going to sell my businesses. I'm going to sell my home. I'm going to sell my corporation. I'll make Aliyah to Israel too. And I'll sit and learn Torah in Kolel all day. Okay? Come on. Get real. Well, his wife just let it go. She just let it go. About a year later, the news began to trickle back to America. The news came home that this particular man and his wife, after over 21 years of fruitless marriage, was making a Brit Milah that week in Yerushalayim Ira Kodesh. And when the news came back to America, who heard the news first? This American guy's wife. Oh, she was waiting. She was waiting for her husband to come home that night. And that night, her husband comes home, clueless, walks in. <laughs> Honey, I'm home. Walks inside, sits down by the kitchen table, waiting for supper. And then he looks up and he sees his wife is sitting on the other side of the room with her arms crossed, smiling. He says, Honey, uh. Is everything okay? She says, yes. No, 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 no. I see that look on your face. Is everything okay? Yes, yes, absolutely. Everything is actually great. So what's going on? What's the matter? Nothing. Honey, you look like you want to tell me something. Oh, do I want to tell you something? Yes, I do want to tell you something. Okay, so just say it. You might want to sit down for this. I'm sitting. Tell me. Listen. You remember that friend of yours, the guy that you bumped into in Israel a little over a year ago when you were on vacation? The friend that was married for 21 years without children? The friend that made Aliyah to Israel? He says, yes. Well, guess what? This week, he's making a Brit Milah. The guy said, wow, no way. Yes. Do you remember what you said? And then suddenly it hit him. Uli. Oh my gosh. Wait. That's right. You said that if he has a baby boy this year, you're going to sell all your businesses. You're going to sell your corporations. You're going to sell your home. And you're going to make Aliyah to Israel too and sit and learn in Kolel all day. Oh boy. I did say that, didn't I? Yes, honey, you did. Oh, what am I going to do? That's a neder. That's a, that's a real neder. Well, the next morning, this American wealthy businessman was on the first flight out to Ben Gurion Airport. And there, when he landed, he got into a taxi and he made a beeline straight to Bnei Brak, to the home of the Gadol, Hagaon Reb Chaim Kanievsky Shalita. He comes into Reb Chaim's house screaming, It's an emergency! I gotta see, I gotta see Reb Chaim Kanievsky. Please let me in! They finally let him in. He comes up to Reb Chaim. 
Rebbe, you gotta help me, it's an emergency. No, what's the matter? And the man begins to tell Reb Chaim how over a year ago he met his friend on a vacation in Israel, 21 years married, no kids, and he berated and he, well, I shouldn't say berated, he told him, get with it, make peace with the situation. You're not having children. And when he came home to his wife and he told over the story and she yelled at him, I said, ha, if he has a child, a boy this year, I'll sell all my businesses. Come to Israel and sit down and learn. Rebbe, I can't do it. Reb Chaim looks at him and says, No. You said, Tekayem. Baruch, Omer ve'oseh. Hamdaberum kayem. Shechol dvarav. Emet vatzedek. You said, come, but I can't, Rebbe, I can't. I spent 25 years building my corporations, my businesses, my home. I can't just sell everything, pick up and leave and to come and sit and learn all day. I'm, it's not me. I'm a businessman. I'm a regular guy. Reb Chaim looked at him and said, no. The guy said, no, 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 Harav, listen. I know I made a neder, but there's a concept of hatarat nedarim. Be matir the neder. If I would have known at the time that I made the neder be'emet, it would come out like I would never have made the neder. She'elat chacham ve'en chacham gedola gadol mimcha. Please, Harav, give me a hatara. Reb Chaim said to him, No hatara, no hatara. Oy vey, no Harav. Maybe, maybe I can do it al yidei shaliach. Maybe I can send a messenger. I'll go back to America. I'll find a nice young Kolel guy who's looking for the opportunity, him and his wife, to go to Eretz Israel to learn in Kolel. I'll pay for the tickets. Yisachar Zevolun. We'll make, we'll make a partnership. He'll sit and learn and I'll, I'll support him. And like this, I'll be Mekayem my neder. Chaim looks at him. No shaliach. No shaliach. No hatara. No shaliach. No. Reb Chaim looks at the man and says, Mi odeya! Who knows? Maybe Shamaim gave a baby boy to this couple after 21 years of fruitless marriage only because it was going to bring you to sit down in Eretz Yisrael and learn Torah. No. No hatara. No shaliach. Bore olam is waiting for you. Ask yourself, wow. If the Ab if Hashem was ready to give a husband and wife a child after 21 years of fruitless marriage to get one simple Jew, not a Rosh Kolel, not a Rosh Shiva, but a regular, good, fair Jewish businessman, to sit down and learn. Look what it means to Bore Olam. Every time we open up a Sefer, every time we do another few lines of Gemara, another Abaye, another Rava, another Bet Shammai Bet Hilel, another Daf, another page. Because this is our bond with Bore Olam. Kudsha Berichu Yisrael Ve'oraita Chadhu. This is our loving relationship. This is our Torah. Magne. Umatzle. Ah, how sweet it is. Rabotai. If it means that much to Kudsha Berichu, if it can bring a child to a family married for 21 years waiting for children, then what could the Torah do for us? To learn it, Lishma. To enjoy its sweetness. How many Gezerot could we be mevatel this year? With just another page, another daf, another few lines. How much sickness in our community could be healed because of one person that pushed another few minutes to sit down and learn. Or maybe a little Mesirut Nefesh on a night that he wasn't up to it, but he came out to a shir. This is Torah. This is the Or. It's not just about you. It's about lighting up Mamash Klal Yisrael. 
Your Torah can be the Haganah of somebody else. It could be the Yeshua for our families. It's all riding on this. Amalek knew this. Haman knew this. Coming after us at the time where they thought we lost it. No. <laughs> That's the very month that we're going to accept it again, Mehadash. With a new unbelievable simha. With an unbelievable love. Me'ahava. This is our Kedoshah, Torah HaKedoshah. This is the Torah that its light continues to light up Am Yisrael. This is the Torah that its light is the beacon of light in the Galut, especially here in America, to shine the way for the Bi'at HaGoel. Let's be Zohar this year with a little bit more Torah, with a little bit more learning, with another Shi'ur, with another Daf. This is what Amalek is after, because this, this Torah is our essence. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.